Hello friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, let's discuss about plinth beam. Here I have the plinth beam layout and plinth beam details and I have the typical beam details. So let's discuss one by one. For starting, let me tell you what is plinth level. Plinth level is the level where your foundation ends and the floor level starts. So that is the plinth level. We provide plinth beam mainly to carry the wall load which is coming above the plinth beam and also we provide plinth beam to interconnect the column to avoid the slender column effects because the column will start in the foundation level that is in the footing level so if we don't interconnect in between so it will go up to the floor level that is the first floor level and if you see the height of the column will become more and it will become a slender column if we don't interconnect that one what happens the load on the column will become more and the column start bucking so in order to avoid that one we need to interconnect that is at the plinth level we need to interconnect the columns to avoid the slender effect of the column here i have connected all the columns and i have provided the plinth beam wherever it is required to carry the wall load let me explain you one plinth beam here let's consider plinth beam one which is of 9 inch by 18 inch size let's take this full continuous plinth beam and then let me explain you the longitudinal section of the reinforcement details so here if you see this is the main bar and this is 2d12 that means two numbers of lmm dia bar which is running throughout the length of the beam similarly at bottom also we have 2d12 two, two numbers of 12mm dia bar that is running throughout the length of the beam so in this one we don't have any extra reinforcement now let's look into the stirrups if you check the stirrups it is two legged eight at eight inches twelve inches eight inches center to center so you have to remember always we need to provide more stirrup reinforcement near the support and in the middle it has to be less and again it has to be more near the support that is why it is eight inches twelve inches and eight inches here you may think that why do we need to provide more shear reinforcement near the support and less shear reinforcement in the middle of the beam always shear force will be maximum near the support and it is very less in the middle of the beam so that is why we need to provide in order to resist that shear force near the support we need to provide more shear reinforcement near the support this distance we need to calculate that is l by 3 l we need to take it from the outer to outer distance of the beam and then we need to divide by 3 so the beam distance is 9 feet 9 inches so we have to do l by 3 here and then we have to find out this stirrup length so this is l by 3 first l by 3 8 inches and the middle l by 3 12 inches center to center we need to provide and in the end l by 3 we need to provide 8 inches center to center for all the beams we need to follow the same procedure next let me show you the cross section of the beam see here it is mentioned as 2 y 12 that means two numbers of 12 mm dia bar and similarly bottom also two white one two numbers of 12 mm dia bar and this is the stirrup ring that is two legged t8 at 8 inch center to center here we have not divided into three parts because if you see beam 2a let me show you so this is the beam 2a the span of the beam is very less so that is why we have it divided into l by 3 instead of that we have used same spacing throughout the B. Similarly, beam 4A, we have the cross section and if you take this beam 6, here we have one extra bar. As I have explained you before, we have the top main reinforcement and bottom main reinforcement and here we have one top extra bar that is also two numbers of 12 mm dia bar. Why we need to provide this is, it depends on the bending moment which is coming on the beam and load which is coming on the beam. If the moment is more at this support, we need to provide one extra bar at top. See here also in this area, we have one top extra bar. See in this beam, we have the bottom extra bar because here the moment is more at the bottom so that is why we have provided one bar extra at the bottom so that's all about the reinforcement details clear cover to the beam is 25 mm that we have to keep it in mind so here we have typical longitudinal section of beam in this this is the main bar at bottom and here this one is the main bar at top so we will be having extra bar at top and bottom as well so here the question is what is the 
extra bar length we need to provide which is 0.25 l that is l by 4 we need to consider this is l that is support to support clear span it is not center to center of support it is the clear span of support that is l so we need to consider 0.25 l that is l by 4 as top extra bar similarly for bottom extra bar if it is a discontinuous edge we need to provide 0.1 l if it is a continuous edge we need to consider 0.15 l see this is the continuous edge so we need to consider 0.15 l and again if you see this is also continuing this beam is also continuing so that is why it is 0.15 l and if you see here see this is not a continuous edge it is a discontinuous edge so we need to consider 0.1 l and here it is a continuous edge it is 0.15 L and top it is everywhere 0.25 L only it is not like uh, bottom so wh wherever we provide bottom sorry top extra bar we need to provide L by 4 as the length of the bar next typical beam reinforcement details at column support if it is a column support how we need to provide the reinforcement arrangement inside the column first let me tell you about top top we need to provide minimum development length from this support see this is from this support to here this bend you can see so th this bar is bending like this inside the column so from this support it should be development length similarly at bottom if you consider it should be ld by 3 so this is the top bar top bar is from the support minimum development length we need to provide similarly bottom we need to provide ld by 3 that much bend we need to provide for example if the development length is 48 times dia of the bar which is equal to 48 times 12 which comes around 576 mm let's consider as a 600 mm if your development length is 600 mm then from this support you have to bend inside the column 600 mm at top that is the minimum development length so minimum development length we need to provide similarly at bottom 600 divided by 3 at least 200 mm bend you have to provide next typical beam reinforcement detail at beam support if it is a column support we have to provide minimum ldt at top and ld by 3 at bottom so this is the case where your secondary beam is resting on the main beam in that case you have to provide both bottom and top as minimum d by 2 d is the depth of the beam minimum d by 2 we have to provide as a bend next one is typical junction details of main and secondary beam this is the case where your secondary beam is coming and resting on the main beam in that area we have to provide one bent up bar like this the dia of the bar is 2 by 16 that is two number of 16 mm bars we have to provide if this is called bent up hanger type bars so this length we have to provide as 300 mm this is the main beam and this is the secondary beam that's all about the beam reinforcement details next let's look into the same reinforcement details at site how they have constructed how they have arranged the reinforcement bars this is the excavation work before plinth beam before starting the plinth beam construction we have to excavate it according to the size of the plinth beam and then we need to lay the pcc layer after that we have to go for the plinth beam construction this is the blinding for plinth beam so before starting the plinth beam we have to do this to make the surface free from dirt and mud to make the plinth beam in line we can construct the brickwork of one layer next let's look into the reinforcement details you can see the stirrups are more near the support and in the middle it is less the reinforcement arrangements are ready for concreting you can see here the top extra bar is provided here you can see this is the secondary beam and primary beam arrangement where the secondary beam is resting on the primary beam you have to provide the bent up bar like this see here also the bent up bar is provided this is the bent up hanger bar this one is the secondary beam and this is the main beam so the secondary beam is resting on the main beam so that is why we have provided this bent up bar similarly here also this is the main beam so that is why we need to provide the bent up bar and rest all you know this one is the top main reinforcement 2 dia 12 mm bar similarly bottom main reinforcement 2 dia 12 mm bar and stirrup arrangements as i have told you near the support it should be more and in the middle it will be less
so friends that's all about plinth beam details i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box if you have any queries your comments are always welcome and also super thanks button has been enabled in our channel if this video is very useful for you if you want to support this channel please click on the super thanks button below this video you have to log in to your email id and then you have to click on the super thanks buttons and pay some amount to support this channel don't forget to share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos thank you for watching